I am very pleased. Um, I'm going to introduce the person who is going to introduce the speaker. So um, Gary Wasserman uh, has been a longtime supporter over 20 years. Um, he has supported the Cranbrook community on many levels. He is a, an incredible collector and now has actually moved um, forward and has developed and opened Wasserman Projects where Cone Show is. And I am very pleased and very excited to have Gary Wasserman introduce the artist. Thank you. So here, here, here's too much information. Um, when I was, I think, about seven years old, I had a birthday party and nobody came. And ever since then, every time I do something, I'm terrified nobody is coming. So I'm really happy to see all this many people here. Um, I, uh, I met uh, Kuhn van Mechelen five years ago, actually re some, somewhat tangentially related to Cranbrook. Uh, my partner and I were in Venice for the Architecture Biennale where our esteemed director uh, had been part of the group who designed the entrance to, to the Amer American pavilion there. And uh, we were in a studio and we saw this really crazy looking uh, work with these, these chickens. And uh, I, I was even kind of frightened by them. And then there was one that you'll see as, uh, as Kuhn goes on that is a double-headed one that sort of we fell in love with and we ended up meeting Kuhn who happened to be in Venice at that moment. So then we went to his farm where his chickens live in truly chicken splendor. You have to know that the chickens are never harmed in any way. They're never killed, they're never eaten. Even the eggs are never eaten. And uh, the more you know about the concept, the more he becomes, I think, one of the most intriguing examples of the way that contemporary art, the work itself, is a manifestation of a much more compelling conceptual underpinning. And the narrative is in, in his work is really riveting. Uh, just by way of Credentials, uh, Kuhn this year will have more than 25 different exhibitions around the world. The, he was a participant in the 2012 Documenta and he will be in his, I think, second Venice Biennale this year. So with that, I will introduce you to Kuhn van Mechelen. Good evening. First of all, um, thank you for this invitation. If I have to thank so many names, I will make mistakes, but I have to thank, of course, Gary and his team, Charlie, Darlene, Brian. I mean, we made a wonderful exhibition, I think. I was not alone. I mean, we did it together. And it becomes like a family. This is also where my work is about. I have to thank Cranbrook to invite me here, to give me the opportunity to speak. I'm going to tell you something about my work. More than 20 years, I'm working on a very large crossbreeding program. When I had the age of five years old, I was fascinated by nature. I was fascinated how a little chick comes out of the egg. I was watching it day and night. And you have to know something. Inside of the egg, two thirds of the egg become chicken and one third is the air. When it tries to come out, it has to take the air to break the scale to get born. If it is not strong enough and it shows the wrong way of breaking out, 
it is the same air that kills the little chick. This kind of things, this kind of contradictions, I really believe in that. It strikes me. If you enlarge this, and I give you another, another example, like the space shuttle. If you try to go to the moon, you have to break the right scale to discover. This is what this project is all about. Try to discover. When I take another step later in my history, I remember that I went to my father and I asked him, I said, Father, I mean, how is it possible that you put something which you really like in a cage? Why can we do this? And I think that was a very important question. I don't know what he said at that moment, but the fact that that was asking him was very important. Later on, I started to make art pieces, which I thought it were art pieces. And then I discovered this project. And here we go. For 20 years, I started my lectures by saying, this is not a chicken. For me, it's absolutely a piece of art. And if you look very carefully, you see that it is a passport. This fellow has an identity. It's a crossbreeding between a French, Belgium, and an English chicken. It's a hybrid. You have to know that normally chickens are one of the most pure animals in the world. They are also the most domesticated animals there are. To understand a little bit better what I'm doing, we have to jump into the history of the chicken. There is only one chicken. It's the red jungle fowl that lives at the feet of the Himalaya. By human interest, you see my hand? The chicken went all over the world. By mutation and by manipulation. I mean, this little chick gives his genes to a totally new world. The manipulation went that far that in every country we have a chicken that tells something about the country. Can you imagine? So the relation between the chicken and humans are very strong. I give you an example. The poulet de Bresse from France has red in the head, white in the body and blue legs. That's the French flag. And that's not the only example. In America, they make the biggest chicken in the world, the Jersey Giant. In China, they make a hairy chicken, a fluffy chicken, and it calls silky. It's directly linked to the culture of silk. In other words, we did a translation of our culture into a living animal. And there starts my story. I was watching this for years, from when I was five years old. And then I discovered, is it right that we do this? Can we stop a certain evolution by having all the time red in the head, white in the body, and blue legs? We are talking about living objects. In other words, we took a frame around a living animal. So I was thinking, even when we like to have the French flag forever, once in a while we have to cross. So I started in 1999 my cosmopolitan chicken crossbreeding project, which is a lot. I started with the Belgium chicken, because I'm a Belgium guy, the Mechelse Kukuk, to crossbreed with the Poulet de Bresse. And I did it in an exhibition on the border between Belgium and France. The outcome was the Mechelse Bresse. For me, a piece of art, something new. Because it was so unique. There was no uniformity anymore. It was diversity. So I started to make the crossbreeding with England 
that generated crossbreeding with America. And now, after more than 18 years crossbreeding, I have a chicken that contains 16 different countries inside of this chicken. Every time when I go to another land, I do this crossbreeding. And if you're doing this, you're not talking about the chicken. You talk about something else. I think these are big issues. We're talking about globalization, multiculturalism, cloning, genetic engineering, simply by taking this chicken and put it in another context. I believe that we, if we bring parts together, something new can come out of this. Like in this picture, which is artificial, of course. On one side, you see the Mechelse cuckoo, on the other side, you see the Poulet de Bresse. Duality. Procreation. I think that is the most driven force there is. You can ask, what is the guy telling? Is this art? Is this science? Is this biology? Is this philosophy? For me, it's absolutely, absolutely art. Because I'm using the tools of art because I don't know anything else. And it's about surprises. And this picture illustrates it very well. It's me in confrontation with my subject. The chicken gives itself to the project. On the other side, it's revolting. And I'm standing there screaming because a lot of times it's very frustrating. But that's how I deal with the environment. And I think that's very important. Surprises? I tell you what a surprise is. When something else is also dealing with your work. That's the way my work is growing. I tell you, when I was invited by Listen Gallery in London, in the center of London, they asked me to do the crossbreeding with England. So I thought, that's fascinating. In the center of London, to bring a breeding program in that city. I brought the Mechelse Press, which is the crossbreeding between Belgium and France, into England. And then a long journey started. Because I selected in advance which kind of chicken from England that I would like to crossbreed there. And it was the Red Cup. And I couldn't find the Red Cup anymore because in the 60s it was so popular for their eggs that it becomes infertile by inbreeding. And that was very hard. I start to do the research to try to find it. And only in Northampton with a farmer I could find a couple of them. And he was very glad and he said to me, please, take them. In 10 years, there was no offspring. And then all of a sudden, when they were sitting in the gallery, trying to make new chicks, they called me and they said, Kuhn, you have to come to London. Something is going on. I put a rooster with three hands. They said, all the day the hen is fighting to the others. So I came to London, I took the two hands out of the coop, and I let those two together, the rooster and this hen. And look what happened. After three weeks, there was an offspring. That was very sensational. And also, it was very challenging, because it told, it told me immediately what my project was. It was dealing with fertility. By bringing in the crossbreeding between Belgium and France, England becomes fertile. I dare to say this here, but not in England. I also have to say it was noticed, because the next day it was on the cover of the Times and say that it was better than the European Union. <laughs> crossbreeding and fertility. I think this is a very, very important issue. Is this natural breeding? 
like you see here in this installation, which I did in the Central Museum in Utrecht, all the different generations next to each other? Or is it genetic engineering? So the question is, what is this? And I believe that I'm always in the middle of it. And I think that it's very important that an artist give common on society. Not really critics, you know. Because when he give critics, it comes to something else. When you give comment, a fantastic debate is possible. I think this is one of the most important slides that I have to show today. It are the passport of the chickens who are born in the crossbreeding program. After many years of crossbreeding, I see on the surface that the colors are returning. And that's very special. I see the first generation of the Mechelse Kukuk. I see the Sergi Giant. I see the English Red Cup. Things are returning in time, but in another form. And I think it's very important because it tells me something about genetic memory. How strong is that? So together with my scientific friends, we went to see what's going on inside of a chicken. I have to tell you, and Gary said it also, I never kill a chicken. I crossbreed them. I take the consequence that I live. My garden is my studio. And at this moment, I have 1,200 chickens running around. Looking inside of the chicken who died. And I think it's a very important project because for me it's the curiosity how is the structure inside? For the doctor, for the professor, the curiosity is what's happened when we make a scanning of a chicken. A conclusion was that if we make a scanning of a chicken, in the first five days in the egg, the outcome of the egg can be very dangerous for the bones. For me, it was very great to have the opportunity to make something completely new. With digital files, I created a virtual crossing. I make it a little bit more clear. What is a virtual crossing for me? When the chicken die of one race, let's say the Mechelse Kukuk from Belgium, we go to the scanner, we put it inside, we generate thousands and thousands of image, and that image becomes a digital file, a reconstruction of a reality. Then we take the Poulet de Best from France, do the same thing, a 3D reconstruction. With another program, which is Mimics and Magics, I start to crossbreed. I start to link those two animals on each other. And when you look to this picture, it gives like the idea of something that we found in the past, but actually is something that lives in the future. And I put gold on top of it, because it has to look like a real, real treasure. Transparency. I believe in transparency. I believe if we bring parts together, something new can come out of it. Transparency of professions. Transparency of knowledge that we bring together. It gives view on things. Things from history, from the present and the past. Sorry, and the future. It's a mallet of three things. That's why I'm using this glass. Glass is transparent. Glass has that possibility that you cannot fill in when you use it in a transparent form. The history is very important for this project to carry the future. Every two years I do an expedition to the Himalaya to see where the chicken lives. 
and I discover something very important. It lives on the border between the jungle and the villages. And I think that's a tremendous important question. Because it was directly linked to my history. Because I was always conflicted in myself. Who came to who? Did the chicken come to me or did I come to the chicken? And here it is a very funny question. But if you enlarge this question, then you can ask yourself, did the chicken come to us or did we come to the chicken? This is a question that gives me my Dr. Honoris Causa in medicines. Because a very important scientist discovered, Life Anderson, that the chicken came to human. This is the base of what I have to say. Because that's dealing directly with domestication. It's dealing directly, directly with the big questions of what are we doing today. And I think it's very, very, very important thinking about how did we use this animal? How do we use every little detail of it? In consumption, in fashion, give and take, construction, destruction, me in confrontation with my own creation. How do we deal with it? I also saw that the chicken lives on the border because it gives signals to the wood, to the jungle, when there is dangers coming. I call this work on top of the world. How to balance this? How to think about those things? So, one of my more important works is this one, the Salvator Globe. The Salvator Globe is normally on top of the church. The bowl stands for the world, the cross for religion, and on top of the cross there is the rooster. And the rooster is crying above everything. And I was looking to this symbol, and I was thinking, maybe that's too much. Maybe it's too much power, too much controlling. That's why I brought the rooster back into the world. By communication, crossbreeding, diversity. And when you turn this symbol, this symbol, you see that the women's sign comes. This is a way of creating more chances. The meeting of something can let you grow. That's why I come to this philosophical model. The world, a starting point. The horizontal lines and the vertical lines. There is always a choice. And I see the vertical lines, the horizontal lines as the manipulation, and I see the vertical lines as the mutation. Mutation is a point where things met. It's a point where we have the chance to mutate, where we can grow. The manipulation is a line that we can choose. The question is, where do you like to be in? Thinking about all these thoughts, after 20 years, I started in the beginning of this year my Open University of Diversity. And actually, it's my studio. My studio which contains my work, my cosmopolitan chicken crossbreeding program, but also three new foundations. One foundation is a cosmopolitan chicken research project. Another is the Walking Egg Foundation, and the third one is the Cosmo Golem Foundation. Starting with the Walking Egg pro Project and Foundation. What kind of foundation is this? With this project, I have to jump 20 years back. But now, it is a foundation that talks about fertility in developing countries. I do this with Professor Dr. Willem Omblet, from the clinic in Belgium, myself, Dr. Mario Mirialdi, which is a leader of the WHO World Health Organization in Geneva. And together we start this foundation. 
How did it start? Because I only can explain it through my work. I was making an egg, a glass egg with iron legs. And I was looking at this, and I was thinking I felt myself as a lost egg. Someone who gave myself strong legs to run over the world, searching for 37 point degrees to come out. The exactly heat of an incubator to let a little chick born, to be born. I think that's an important figure. After a couple years of work, it becomes a magazine, which calls the Walking Egg magazine. And the Walking Egg magazine is a container, is a think tank about art and science, but also about art and fertility. A cross-breeding program between professors, doctors, scientists, and artists. The question is, how to fertilize our world? What are we doing with this? The globe where we live on. Are we poisoning this, or are we giving it strength? Energy, communication, and life. Energy we give further by electricity, communication by fire wire, and the umbilical cord, unfortunately, sometimes we cut. Fertility. It's about getting born. It's about trying and struggle to come out of the wreck. After 15 years of collaboration with the doctors, it becomes a permanent installation in a clinic, a real clinic, a fertility clinic, where they treat people. On one side, you have all the studies, the scientific studies, and on the other side, you have the cage. And in the cage, there is an egg, that one egg who has the chance to come out, where we try to fight, fight for. And in the middle, there is this hybrid, this absolutely hybrid, a combination of a rooster and an eagle. The power and the strength. Some make, some take. Fertility. That is the base of this foundation. And after these 15 years of collaboration and working with magazines, discussion, congresses, it becomes a foundation about fertility in developing countries. Let me explain fertility in developing countries. Well, there is a huge problem with fertility. The fertility in the Western countries go down, the fertility maybe on other places goes up. But in general, it goes down. But we are with seven billion people, and that is too much. But the problem with too much is that I'm not too much. The others are too much on the other side of the world. So thinking about quality of life, what is quality of life? So we start to do the research. And together, we did expert meetings on the other side of the world in Africa to talk about it with a lot of NGOs, clinics. And the outcome was very clear. Somebody in Africa who cannot not have a child is less than a dog. Somebody who cannot have a child cannot carry a name because you only get your name if you have a child. This is very sad. And it are always the women, because the man is never infertile. And if he is infertile, the brother comes. These are the facts. So thinking about quality of life, we work together with the WHO, which have a fantastic family planning. And I think if you can work on the balance of giving somebody who cannot have a child, maybe the desire of having one, and the others who have 15, 
you can educate that maybe two or three is enough, then there is a chance to have a balance. So this foundation grows at this, mo at this moment to a worldwide foundation. The foundation is working on a low-cost treatment. And there are some numbers in this. A treatment for having a child here in a Western country is like $4,000. So with the research team in this project, they found a technique for 188 euro. That's a big difference. How can I help in this foundation? Well, I make an endless edition of a walking egg, Lito, and we sell it for 188 euro. In that case, you help somebody on the other side of the world to give life a better quality. Second foundation is this cosmopolitan chicken research project, the CCRP. It's a foundation, it deals with genetic research, hybridity in art and science. It's with Professor Dr. Jean-Jacques Cassiman from the KU Leuven in Belgium, myself, Prof Professor Piet, uh, Piet Stienissen from the university in, uh, in Belgium as well, and Professor Dr. Olivier Hanot from the University of Nottingham, UK. There is a big research team who's doing this. How did it come, this foundation? Well, on a certain moment, on a certain day, there was a rooster in my garden who was sitting there in a corner alone. So I was watching this and I said, what's happening with this one? So I took it under my arms and I was looking and I saw that the spur was broken. You have to know that the spur for a rooster is very important. With a spur, he can have attention from the female, and with the sperm, he can, he can defend himself in a fight. This one had no spur anymore. So I took him to a doctor, one of my friends, who is a stomatolo, and I asked him, I said, can we help this? Can we bring this rooster back to the other level so that he can join the group? And he said, yes, we can put an implant, like they do with the dent. So we start this operation. And he put an implant in the leg. And at the end, I give it a golden spur. Gold. Because, never forget, this is a piece of art. For me, it was very important that this was gold, because this one couldn't live without a spur. And by giving him gold, through that technique, he becomes king. And I think this is a very important project. Because there is another part where I didn't count on. And that was the part of the animal rights. So all of a sudden, I received a telephone call. And they told me, Mr. Van Mechelen, is that you? I said, yes. You have to come to court. I said, what do you mean? Yeah, you did something which is not allowed. I said, what do you mean? He said, you cut a spur from a rooster. And I was thinking, let it go. I didn't cut this spur. So this is an easy thing. So I had to go to court in Brussels. And there I was sitting. And I did my explanation. And I, and I was making the same talk. And I said the social context. And I said to the activist, look what I did. Um, so he was a little impressed. And then the judge, he told me. He said, this is maybe true what you did. He said, but you cannot put an implant in a living chicken. I said, what do you mean? It's not allowed to put a prothese there. 
and there I was standing, you know, sweating, uh, the whole story over me. And on the moment, toing, the bell starts to ring. I said to the, to, the, to the church, I said, can you tell me what is allowed? And he said, yes, I can tell you what is allowed. I said, please, will you tell it to us all? And he said, yes, I will tell. You can burn the beak, he said. You can cut the wings, you can cut the legs, and you can kill the chicken. This is allowed by law. So I was looking to the activist and I said, who do you like the most? Do you like me or the law? So he definitely said, I like you. So he skipped everything. So I was free. And I think it's a very important story. Because I took the telephone and I was calling the director from this organization of the animal rights. Because I have nothing against animal rights. Huh? So I told him, I said, listen, because I know him very well. I said, what did you do? You know my work. You know that I treat these animals very well. That this is a project about life. I said, why do you bring me to court? Yes, he said, we have to listen to everybody. And we thought that you cut the spur, spur instead of. I said, yeah. I said, but I'm not calling you for this. I said, I'm calling you because I did my job as an artist. I gave comment on the society. I said, you're an activist. You're the one who has to change the law. You have to ask that it is allowed to put a protease in a living chicken. And he said, yes, I will work on it. So you see that environment is important in what I'm doing. So the environment is always working is the third element who is working on my projects. So I was invited in China, in Guangzhou, in the Triennial, and I made there an installation on 1,000 square meter on the second floor, and it was an entire jungle. We're talking about 120 palm trees, 200 banana trees, an artificial jungle, maybe. So you have to step in, you have to disinfect your feet, your shoes, you have to wear a mask, and what you see in the jungle is the red jungle fall, is the source of life, if you use the metaphor. And if you step out, you come in, cert in a certain conservation room, a room with 16, at that moment, tables of the crossbreeding, all nice stamped, written the name of every generation. Stepping from a jungle where you sweat, and then stepping to a refrigerator. So the question there is, what do we have to protect in our environment? Do we have to protect the source, or do we have to protect what we make? Answer will be both, of course. But the most important thing is you step out you go to the big human incubator. You remember searching for the 37.6 degrees to come out. That's important. Environment. I jump back in 2005 when the chicken flu came all over Europe. I was in danger because it was my project. And every mayor of a village or a city can simply say, you have to kill your chickens. Do you know that the chicken flu stops 50 meters from my door? 50 meters. All the cameras, television were lying in front of my house to see how I have to kill my cosmopolitan chicken project. That was on the news. But it stopped 50 meters from my door. I saw immediately something else. I saw, of course, the border between chickens they can live and chickens that have to be killed. I mean, metaphorically, the cosmopolitan chicken in the middle, in no man's land, an island, a piece of art. 
But to protect, to protect it for the future, I started immediately to make a backup. I made a backup of the sperm of the total project. And I put it under the name frozen culture with a double meaning. I brought the sperm of all the chickens in one ton, one ton, one island, minus 196 degrees. Under the question, is this hybrid? Is this where we're searching for? And maybe this is the most dangerous place on Earth if we don't deal with the environment. At that moment, I had a big interest to crossbreed Africa in my project, the Mechelse and Bulu. But I was not allowed to bring African chickens into Europe. I was blocked by authorities. And I thought, this is very interesting. Let's change environment. Let's make a breeding center in Africa. Because in Africa, the place where I built this breeding center is the Rift Valley, the valley where all the viruses come from, as the chicken flu. And I was thinking, maybe we need Africa to build up a certain immunity. The environment can help to make a better strength. So I was invited for the biennial of Dakar to make a big display of my work on the island Il Gore. We got fertility, and now we have immunity. In 2003, they present the rooster on the cover of the magazine Nature by saying that this is the animal maybe for the next 50 or 100 years to develop a medication for viruses and degeneration diseases. And I think this is very inspiring. So with the team, the research team, they start to take blood samples of all my crossings we talk about 1,000 animals. And they had three big questions. First, is this diversity? Second, what about fertility? And third, what about immunity? All philosophical questions that I had in my work. After four years of deep research, they came with some answers. First of all, they said it is diversity. It is an enormous pool of diversity. The fertility went up from 30% to 19, and the immunity is doubled. In other words, they live much longer, and there are more chicks. For me, a big problem, because I have to feed them every day. Cosmopolitan Chicken Research Project. The beauty of all this foundation is that the intellect to come from this foundation goes directly back, back into my work. For the, last foundation, for the last foundation, we have to jump back 30 years ago for my Cosmo Golem project. You have to know this is the first sculpture that I made 30 years ago. And today, it is a social artistic project that deals with children's rights. It's driven by Professor Dr. Peter Adriaanses, Jean de Vos, myself. Jean de Vos is a Nobel Prize nominee in 2005 because she's working for 14 years in India against children's labor and children's abuse. Peter Adriaanses is a children's psychiatrist. What is Cosmo Golem? So when I was 17 years old, I was building a sculpture. I thought it was a sculpture. And I give it the name Golem. I built it in three days. But after many years, I was watching back to the sculpture, knowing what I'm doing now. And I was thinking about Golem. What does it mean? So I went into the legend of this Golem. If you take the word golem, it means artificial human. But if you take the legend, 
then, have to, then, have, then you have to go to a Jewish legend. And it was in the Praxa ghettos. There was a rabbi who was making a big figure, a mystery man, that was trying to help people in the ghettos when there was quarrel during the Second World War. This inspires me. I was looking back to this legend very carefully. But all of a sudden, you know, the big figure who was a helper came in the wrong hands and becomes a monster, a destroyer. And it was only the child who can make this figure unclear. So he was only listening to the children. So I was looking back to this sculpture and I saw this sculpture very different, you know. This big sculpture, four meters high, I was looking at it and I said, okay, it's a young sculpture, but it's already dealing with domestication. It's already dealing with spaces. The body is a closed space. The head is an open space. And I think it's very important that the head is an open space because thoughts can go from one to another. So thinking about this sculpture, I said, well, I think I have to give this to children because this sculpture gives me the freedom of what I've been today. So I said, let's deconstruct it and give different parts to the children. Let them work on it. But first of all, let it travel. Let it go to other parts of the world where children are who have not the chance that we have. Traveling in many different ways. And if they make the sculpture, and if they assemble the sculpture to the big man figure, they have to work on the content inside. So little children are making drawings, or making music, or making dance. They express themselves. People listen to them. And if the sculpture is ready, there is a big party. And they given their own identity. Like here, a sculpture in India, in Mumbai, which is the center of this project, or in Africa, in Arusha. At this moment, there are 30 sculptures going around the world trying to find this content. The content of a new generation. In one way or another, this is the same project as the Cosmo uh, Cosmopolitan Chicken Project, but on the level of the children. They give it to the sculpture. They celebrate and give it all those, the content to other parts. 30 countries, I say, going from China to America, over Europe, Africa, South America. In April, May, we will make one in Washington. To bring these things together, I made my open university of diversity. It's my studio. It's the place where you can face my work, always related to installations that I make somewhere in the world. It are different spaces, clean spaces, or other more obscure labs. The open university of diversity is a concept. It moves. Like here, on the bian in the biennial, biennial of Venice, I was creating a marble sculpture in between the marble sculptures from the history of science. This confrontation makes it stronger. This was in Palazzo Loredan, a library where art and science meet each other for many centuries. Upstairs, we did the real breeding. New things, biological, but also cultural diversity. There were studies, biological study, scientific study, and anthropological studies. People could join it. Join it. Every century there is a new question. Human and technology. How we go further? How do we match? The different techniques is also important in my projects. Different media, video, 
sculpting, marble, digital, but also carrying history, like here, a real dino egg with the legs of the Cosmopolitan Chicken Project. By carrying generation, we tell something about the future. Bringing different parts together, like this medusa. This is a junction between a chicken and a reptile. It's dealing with the history of the chicken because the chicken was a reptile, or was a T-Rex. Going to different parts of the world, the Open University is an exhibition, as I say, but also lectures. And I'm very proud that the total content of it was brought to Documenta 2012 last year under the name Hybridity in Art and Science, and it was in the Wortley House. It's about humans. It's not about chickens. It's about us. And it's about the chance that together with different professions, we have to look in the transparent egg from tomorrow. Because I believe that every organism is looking for another organism to survive. In my case, I say it with a chicken. I thank you very much. So, um, if we have some time, um, I'm ready for a Q&A. So, if there are some questions, I think um, we have some space. In the meantime, I let the PowerPoint run uh, about several exhibitions that I did. Yes. Just on the immunological basis and the lifespan of the chicken, we're getting an extended lifespan of the chicken. Mm -hmm. Do these uh, uh, roosters and chickens, do they go through the uh, inflammatory aging response and process like you would do? Do they get arthritis, do they get inflammation, do they get a thin disease process? Yes, I think so. I, um, I think that they have this. Um, well, they, 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 they put it in, this, in, in the same order, you know. They, they, they treat it as human. And that's why the model is so important. That's why, um, no, from a pure scientific view, I don't, know, I don't know specifically how it goes because I'm not, I'm not a scientist. I'm, I'm, I'm the artist. But, you know, it, they, they go to the, to, this, to the same... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. Oh, yeah, there is a completely garden. Yeah, there are, at this moment, there are 1,200. And it's more or less always like this, that there are around 1,000 chickens. Of course, they, they, they die once in a while, but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, you mean that, uh, yeah, I, I started, um, when I started this project, so in the beginning, they, um, it was like four to five years, sometimes three, the pure races. But now, today, I'm looking to chickens who become 14 years. And that's, that's very, I mean, it's very hard to see that by crossbreeding, you generate uh, so much vitality. I think it's very important to look at it. And that's why scientists are, have, have a big interest for it. And they do, they do research because they believe also that there are elements in, they were forgotten. And very recently, I did, uh, I did an interview together with a scientist uh, who works on the university in Leuven, which is a, a very good, good university. And uh, I was very surprised when they asked him, um, what this, this project does with you? I mean, did you think in another way? And he said, Actually, yes. He said, we changed our research <laughs> in the university. They said, instead of searching into the pure races, we went to see in the hybrids. And he said, now we are changing everything. And I was like, I said, oh, 
oh my God, I never, I, I never could think that they will do this. Because normally scientists are really prudent, you know, I, which I understand because this has to be evidence-based. But he said, we changed it completely. So it was, I was happy with it. was out without drugs, without vaccines, without nothing. It was natural, and it was in all circumstances. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. Excuse me? Uh, once in a while we go open to public. That means if we... Um, um, this is, my, my studio is a big studio. It's a uh, 3,000 square meter. And I have, uh, well, I have the possibility to do conferences. That means um, we do expert meetings. We are bringing people always uh, around the table from different uh, professions. And it's all, it all has to do with bio and cultural diversity, which is huge. I mean... <laughs> Uh, it's, it, I think it's, it's, it's everything. And once in a while, if we have something to say, which is important, then we do a conference. And then we, uh, of course, we allowed people at that moment. And also sometimes we do, uh, we do exhibitions. Like this year, uh, I, I, was, uh, I, I was participating also in Manifesta, which was, um, um, which was in my region by accident. So... So they took, as a collateral event, they took my studio. So I made, um, I made Hotel des Immigrantes, directly linked to my, uh, to my project. And uh, Hotel des Immigrantes was very interesting. I, wa I was inviting 42 artists all over the world, all different countries. And we lived together. We eat, we drink, we sleep. So my total uh, uh, studio was, um, was a workshop. And um, one of the things that we also do was um, the university came because they were involved in the whole, whole process. We took the DNA, DNA of all the humans who were there to see where they come from. And if, you, and if you see the results, then there was not so much diversity. You understand? There, was, um, there, there were some different regions. So these are so projects that we are doing. In, uh, in, in, in my studio. Hmm. I have a question with, uh, you know, when you breed these chickens, there's more than one offspring. And then you have, you know, these generations that go down from the charts that you showed us. But I'm wondering, in your uh, studio where you have all the chickens, are there areas that are more controlled where you keep, you know, these generations very separate? And then are there areas that are more free where you just might not be able to trace exactly what's happened, but you mm. just let whatever's going to happen happen, or is that not Yes. Possible? Well, it, it, it worked like this, because I have um, uh, the studio of the 3,000 square meter, that's my open university of diversity, there are some chickens sitting. So that's one part. The other part is the breeding centers. The breeding centers is at my home. I have five hectare where Acres, here they say acres, I think. So where, where all the cages are. When I do, like, let's say this year, I have a show in, Slo uh, in Slovenia. So I'm invited by the museum in Slovenia. So I concentrate myself on the crossbreeding of Slovenia. So I have, to make, I have to put them in the cages because I have to take, of course, the one who carried the 16 generations, which is today the Mechels of Senegal, I put them together with the Styrian from Slovenia. Um, and I was searching also for, uh, for the Styrian in Slovenia. And it seems to be that this chicken is linked to the university because they do, they, they do research on this chicken. So I called the university to participate in the whole show. So that will happen now. But that's very much controlled, of course. So that's in, in cages. But then. When they have the chicks, you know, then uh, they go out. They, they live on the field. But I mean, is there an opportunity for just like crazy intermixing that you can't trace or not really? 
Yeah. Well, there is an opportunity that they do, but for me, it's not so interesting. Uh, because, you know, I think it's dealing with, um, if you deal with domestication, it's like dealing with uh, order and chaos. I think we have to make order and chaos. This is also, I think, what an artist is doing. He's, uh, he, he's trying to control the chaos, which, is, which you cannot control. So also this chicken, you cannot control. At the end, there is an out outcome which you cannot predict. You have to set it free. Um, but the struggle is that I ring them, you know, when they come out, when they grow up, I ring them, and the ring is maybe the most important thing on the chicken because that makes it an art piece. That means that I mixed the colors to a chicken, you know? Um, it's never labeled as an endangered species, but uh, because we're dealing with uh, domesticated animals and not with wild animals, uh, that's, that's a huge difference. Um, so, um, but they are labeled as art pieces. They are not labeled as, uh, uh, as something else. So it's an art piece. Each, each chicken who is born, um, I make a photograph, I make a passport, uh, I register it, we take a blood sample, we have a, we have a whole administration of this project, which goes on for 20 years, you know? So this is a huge database. Um, but for me, it's always an art piece, because it's so, so new. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I speak to everybody because uh, I, th I, think, I think that uh, that art is on every corner, you know? I think that's important. Uh, so I speak to everybody. If they invite me for, uh, for a congress on, uh, on chickens, I will come to speak. Although I have to say they don't like me so much uh, because I, I'm breaking the races, you know? Because those people are working on making races. But although I have to say also, more and more they find it more interesting because they start to realize that, uh, like I said in the beginning, even if you like uh, to keep this poulet de bresse, you have to, uh, to crossbreed once in a while. Otherwise, there is no poulet de bresse. So they start to understand because, you know, uh, in the industry also, they're facing a lot of problems there of inbreeding. So the, the, my, my English generation was a very good example of it, you know. There was, um, so, yes, they, they have an interest. They have an interest in, in, in what I'm doing. But that they should take this and, and, and take it further... Well, in the beginning of my project, the Japanese came to my project. And they were ready to give me an amount of money to have the Mechel Sabres as a new chicken for the market. Because the egg production was very good. So, so somewhere they picked, picked it up and they came to me and they offered me, really. To, and and I, I, I said, of course, I said, no, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm not... Um, I'm not a dealer in chickens, you know? So, but maybe then I was now in the south of France where it's not snowing, so maybe better. But I, I, mean, I mean, this is a choice that you have. That's like the choice with the walking egg in glass. I mean, there was also a dealer who was asked, who was saying to me, Fantastic, the walking egg. Can we make millions of them in red, in yellow, in blue? In, you know, in, a, in every desk, desk you can put it. I mean, this is a choice. This is the same, same choice as the chicken. I said, no. I said, I have an interest in an installation. So those things are turning points.
And I think these turning points are very important. That makes you or an artist or something else. Something else is not, not bad, huh? but in my feeling, it's impossible to do that. You know? That's why I'm saying I give comment on society. I walk on the line. I'm like a red jungle fall, I think, between uh, the jungle and the society. Because I like to, you know, I, I, I like to stay wild, but I like to see what happened in the world. If I don't watch this, I cannot give a comment, you know. And by including this into your project, it goes, you know. Mm. Thank you.